the Creative Industry Group's Lifetime Achievers Award. Presented to you, sir, Demi Gariofu, in recognition of your outstanding leadership, doggedness, persistence, and resilience in promoting and preserving the Nigerian creative space. Uh, thank you so much. Mm. I feel very honored. Thank you. Honest, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I feel very um, happy. I have a sense of fulfillment. Um, you know, this is our society. A lot of times, people like us who are in the background, walking behind the stage, it's like a big show. Uh, people don't um, most times rec recognize the people, the backroom guys. Yeah. So we are the backroom guys. We are the auxiliary services of the industry. So times like this, we feel a sense of fulfillment that okay. Not everybody is missing our input. So thank you so much. I feel very honored. I got one award two, two weeks ago. I told you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I said, ah, OK. The award only come you now. You deserve so, more. <laughs> you deserve more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Sir, please, what do you have to say about the creative industry right now as, it's, as we speak in Nigeria? Uh, the creative in industry right now is just reminiscent of our country. Uh, it has a lot of potential. So I hope. Um, it's not frittered away like our governance. Um, let the industry lead the way. And we can see what Nollywood is doing already, you know, without much government support. Look at the music industry too. Um, the music industry on its own has taken Nigeria as a brand across the globe. Nigerian music is recognized everywhere, not by any effort from the government. So the visual art industry too is growing just like that. So it, it's, um, the creative industry is See like a diamond in the rough, but good polishing, good branding, and conscious marketing. And also, um, realistically, we need added value. Real values need to be portrayed in whatever we do. Whatever we find with our hands and heart and soul to do, we need to portray you know, good values. Okay, so just a quick one. The creative industry group has been able to, within a short time, um, open a, a, a scheme. Um, the welfare scheme, open an insurance scheme, also there's a Pacific estate in the making four, already on, on ground four, the, those in the creative industry to be able to own their own properties with ease. And the CIG, so many other projects already on ground. What would you be, what would you, what would you say to an organization that's just coming up that is putting all these structures together? Um, all these are um, sounding very, um, commendable. Uh, but in Nigeria, I've gotten so used to sound bites. So I would love to see in reality. Um, I will em employ you, employ you to make it real so that people can feel the effect. But it's a good plan, it's a good laudable um, schemes that you've just mentioned. We are, so it's I'm already running. Ah, okay. We have the estate running. Ah, okay. Yes. Ah, that's interesting. Yes, sir. That's quite laudable. So I would say just more big ups. Until I come and see <laughs> reality. Yeah. So, what do you have to say to the upcoming ones who would who look up to you? I mean, you are a veteran. You've been doing a lot of stuff. I mean, you can also give us a little, a little light on the stuff you've done. You know, I'm a rebel in society. Yeah, <laughs> quiet rebel. Um, I'm a visual artist, graphic designer, and illustrator. Uh, born, bred, and buttered in Lagos, Nigeria. I made a career out of designing album covers. I've designed over 2,000 album covers in the last 45, 46 years. Uh, my call to fame are the body of album cover art I did for the career of Fela Anikula Bokuti, the Afrobeat legend, um, revolutionary par excellence, um, Pan-Africanist like myself. Uh, as, a, as, as a single individual, a fella who worked with many uh, graphic artists, but as an individual, I designed virtually half of his entire career catalog um, and I created the movement of art and the music and globally everywhere Afrobeat music has been studied, uh, the accompanying art goes with it so my name is going gradually you know alongside Fela in a little way. I say I feel very happy, very proud to be under Fela's shadow but it's a solid shadow of my own. So that's who I am. So uh, coming to giving advice, uh, I feel strongly it's not only 
a particular segment of society that needs advice. Both the youth and the old need advice. Even me as I'm talking, I need advice. So everyone needs advice. So, but my point as to life is know thyself. That's the greatest injunction in life. Know thyself. That's the essence of knowing who you are. Know who the essence, you know, who you are made to be. Because every human being was created for a purpose. And those, there's no purpose that is superior or inferior. You know, the mechanic is as important as the CEO. Because the CEO has a car. Without the mechanic, he cannot get his car fixed. So likewise, so everybody has a role to play. It's like in a play. Um, in a play, somebody is playing the king, somebody is playing the servant. After the show, you are going home. You are no longer a king and you are no longer a servant. So everyone needs to know yourself then. The second thing is to know the passion. Because the universe, God has given everyone a tool to come and survive. But society has created so many rules and regulations and sometimes they get the human being confused. So for some of us who know who we are, like old souls, we stand with it. Sometimes we are like rebels because we already know what we want to do. So for those who don't know, try and find out, seek for yourself who you are, then find out your gift and harness it and grow it and then monetize it. That's the way to life. That's the way to success. Thank you very much, sir. For just uh, two uh, sentences that you made, I want to, I picked out some few things. One, people, you've been able to stay under the shadow of a very successful hero and you built a brand for yourself. Two, your gift, find out your gift, know who you are. So now, are you in any way mentoring the nearest generation or if there is room for you to mentor some youths that would want to toe a line in what you've been able to accomplish, would you be available for that? Uh, that's a very dangerous question. <laughs> yes, um, I started out mentoring a lot of you because um, I didn't study art in, in the, any institution. I self-taught and I learned from sites, you know, and I read books, I studied. When I studied the classical European master, so to speak, people like Leonardo da Vinci, Picasso, Michelangelo, I realized that they all went through apprenticeship. So I started apprenticeship with a lot of young people. But because of the way our society was, art wasn't very uh, forthcoming with you paying your bills. So eventually I went into graphics, then went into printing. I ran a printing business for 25 years. Most of those people I trained, they are printers. They build houses printing. These days when they see me, they say, ah, uncle, ah, I wish I can draw again. So it pains me, you know, they couldn't follow through uh, because of the social conditions. So, but right now, um, as I'm getting older, I don't have much time, you know, and patience. But thank goodness to social media. So I get um, requests online. I get people come, invite them. We talk. I tell them my story, show them things, and that's that. And the people who are into visual arts. So I give them the opportunity, liberty to come, show me what they are doing, I give them pointers. That's basically how I do. Um, because that's working for my lifestyle. Um, I ran my printing business. I had a lot of people I employed, young people and all that. The interesting thing about the recent generation, these millennials, is, um, ah, I don't even know. They, they are too eager for money, making money. So sometimes, if you are not careful, they, they, they should circuit you and your claims. It has happened to me, it has happened to lot. My mechanic uh, that I had like over 30 years ago, recently I saw him. He said he's still doing it. He said, ah, he doesn't have any, uh, what they call it, apprentices anymore. Yeah. He said, all these young people, that they took his customers and that when he have a job, he will just call people. That's what I do. When I have a job, I call the people I can work with. One off, I pay them off. Yes, so unfortunately I have to do that. That's realistic for me. But it's not as if I'm selfish. I'm always online. I relate to everybody. Right as I speak to you, I have 18 year olds, 19 year olds. Um, four of them came last week before they went back to school from the Winners uh, University. Uh, yes, and they're very intelligent. I showed them books on Pan Africanism and immediately. They said, ah, one of them, she's just 18. He said, ah, I love, I'm, I'm going to buy it. I said, where are you going to find it? The next day she called me, said, I bought it. I said, where? He said, I have 
an online platform. I say, wow, your generation, soft copy. I say, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm mentoring uh, indirectly uh, like that. So that's, that's what I Thank do. you very much, sir. Yeah. But um, the Creative Industry Group would be having a training and mentorish, mentoring uh -huh. um, 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 program very soon. Oh, yeah. I'll be happy if you invite me because I do that when I travel. Well. So I, I will come and talk to them. No need yeah. to ask you any question yeah. anymore. Thank you yeah. very much, I'll, sir. I love that.